Good day, folks. It's Professor Fiore here, and it's time for us to investigate the high-frequency performance of a voltage-to-current transducer. In other words, a voltage-controlled current source. One of these. So we've looked at this before. All right, this is in the text. We have video on this. A voltage-to-current transducer. The basic idea is, given a certain voltage, we can turn that into a current for our load. That current will be true, will be consistent, will be stable, regardless of the value of our load. Up until the limits of the op amp, right? Either too much current or too much voltage. And that expression, the load current, is simply equal to the transconductance, which is 1 over Ri, this feedback over here, this feedback resistor, 1 over Ri times Vn, right? So you get a Gm times a Vn gives you the output load current. The question is, what's the frequency range? Now, on the low end, this is directly coupled, so there's no lower frequency limit unless you introduce some capacitors in here. But what about the high end? Where does this go? So we can investigate this just by doing some simple Bode plots. Right? So here I have an R load of 50 ohms. I have a feedback resistor of 1K, so that's... 1 over 1K would be 1 millisiemen. So I have 1 millisiemen of transconductance. I have an input of 1 volt, all right, 1 volt peak. So um, I would be looking at about a milliamp for output current. Now, that translation, right, 1 over a K, right, 1 1,000th, 1, if we think in terms of volt per amp, all right? So let's go up here and we'll do an AC analysis, an AC transfer characteristic, get a plot of what this is. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is that the TL071 is about a 3.5, 4 megahertz uh, gain, with, gain bandwidth product uh, op amp. So we don't really expect anything bigger than that, but it could be considerably smaller, right? So I'm going to plot this out to 10 meg. I'm going to start it at 1K hertz because there's, again, no real reason to go much below that. Let's see what we get. I'll expand this out. All right. Get a little probe on here. So we're getting uh, a mid-band value of minus 60. Now, that minus 60 is actually the decibel version of the transconductance, right? So 1 over 1K, like I said, is 1 1,000th. And if you were to take 20 log 10 of that, you'd get 60, a negative 60 dB out of it. So don't think of that as a gain, right? We're, we're translating a voltage into a current. So hence why we call this a transducer rather than an amplifier. Anyway, minus 60. So I want to find three decibels down from that, minus 63. Because right, that's going to give us our F2 value. So right about here, and I'm looking at 3.5 and change megahertz. Well, that's just about the F unity of the op amp. So right now it appears anyway, right? It appears that this thing is doing full gain bandwidth product, right? Give or take. So let's do some experiments on here. You know, does the load resistance make a difference? Does the feedback resistor make a difference? Well, let's start by changing the value of uh, our load, right? So what do you want to do? Let's, you know, doubling is always good, right? You can see what's going on with that. I would expect to see some change. You know, if, if there's a proportional sort of change here, you know, that, that'll give us some insight. So I've doubled our load. Let's see what happens. Now, you know, with, a, with an amplifier, like a non-inverting amplifier, if you were to double you know, the gain, let's say, uh, you would expect an, an appropriate decrease, maybe by a factor of two, of the F2. So let's see what happens. All right, so we were sitting, where were we? We were sitting at about three and a half megahertz, smidge over. Let's see what we get now. All right, so we still have the minus 60, as expected. So let's go find our 63. Okay, and I'm at 3.35 megahertz, right? Before we were sitting at uh, 3.54. Okay, so, you know, there's a tiny, tiny little change here. You know, that's not much to speak of. 
I mean, you want to change it again? You know, try going to 200. So this is a factor of four, right? So let's see if we get much of a change here. Oh, geez, look, I'm not even going to get the probe out here. Um, you know, if we compare, we can see there's just very slight variances between here. So there does seem to be a, a sort of a second order change in our load, but nothing serious. I mean, a four to one change in um, the load is producing just a few percentage points in terms of the bandwidth. It's still running at pretty much whatever F unity is. All right, so let's go check out our I. Now maybe we'll do the same thing. I'll double it. All right, let's go to 2K over there. See what we get. Now, because the GM has changed, our uh, figure of merit over here, this negative 60, is going to change. But don't let that dissuade you. All right, so that's actually down, should be down at minus 66 which it is, so we got to go three down from that, which would be minus 69. Right about there. Oh, look, 3.75. So this is, you know, very close again to where we were, right? We were at 3.5, if I remember correctly, for the original 50 ohms. What do you want to do? You want to change this again? I'll change it to four. So now, again, now we got a factor of four change. Do it again. Okay, so that dropped another 6 dB. We're at minus 72, so let's go to minus 75. And we're at 3.9. So we're seeing the same kind of thing. Very, very little change over here, all right, compared to our first. Really, I'd call it a second order. You know, we're getting a few percentage points when we double these values. So you know, we can basically say, we, you know, we can do more tests here, but basically we can say, look, it appears that at least for the sort of range of values that we have, when our I is considerably larger than our load, it looks like the F2, the bandwidth, is pretty close to F unity. It's pretty close to the gain bandwidth product. You know, we might push it beyond that, right? So let's, let's say we set them to be the same value. I got 1K for each. Now what happens? All right, so we're back to our 60 as expected, and we'll go to our 63. Right there. Hey, now we're down to 1.7 meg. Remember our first one that we were sitting back here, right? That was 3.5 meg. We're now sitting at 1.7. Interestingly, we're at about half. Half. Hmm. That's a sizable change, right? That's a sizable change. What if I went to something a lot bigger? Like, what if I went to 9K? Ooh, before I even get the cursor out here, you can see that there's going to be a... Come on. You can see there's going to be a sizable shift here. So there's minus 60. Where's our minus 63? Right around there. Oh, look, it's like 300, 300K. Oh, that's huge. What's going on? Oh, and by the way, why did I choose 9K? Because I want you to ignore the ammeter for just a sec. All right. Think of this as RF in an inverting, a non-inverting voltage amplifier, RF and RI. This would have a noise gain of 9K over 1K plus 1, 10. Gain bandwidth divided by 10 would be, you know, maybe 350 kilohertz, something like that, all right? All depending on the F unity of this guy. Um, so what can we really say? The bottom line here, and you can put this into the simulator and try this yourself, but trust me, it'll, it'll all work out. As long as you have a fairly small value of load, and by small I mean compared to RI, 
you're going to get pretty much full bandwidth of the op amp. But once our load gets around the same size as our eye or larger, we start to lose bandwidth. And essentially, you can predict that by following what you would get with a non-inverting voltage amplifier. Right? In summation, we would just say if our load is less than our I, your F2 is going to be roughly equal to your F unity. If that's not the case, if our load is considerably larger than our I, right? well, same size or larger, you just treat it like a non-inverting voltage amplifier. Right? Treat our load as if it was our F, figure out your noise gain, and then you can divide by uh, divide your F unity by your noise gain, and that'll give you a pretty good value for your F2. Okay, there you go. Voltage to current transducer, how to find the upper frequency limit. Any questions, put them in the comments. Until then, we'll see you next time. Have a good one.